Alright, today I wanted to show you the easiest bloom recipes that I've come across so far. Um, it's super, super simple. All that you really need is you know, it's a tablespoon. I'm doing American Flow Trial. American Flow Trial. Um, random paints. Uh, glow in the dark, oak garter, apple barrel, and just this powder, perf liner, uh, something off of Amazon. All cheap paints, just to show you that it works with kind of whatever you've got. Um, very simple with these. Yeah, there's two parts of American Flow Draw, one part of paint. This is for the color on it. I should be straining the Flow Draw, but for a demonstration, I just want to show you kind of what it is. And I'll deal with the lumps later on. This is Flow Draw that I've had for a while. So it's a little bit older, still works, doesn't smell like rotten eggs or anything. So, it's just a simple fact that I'm going to show you how to do it real fast, and then I will show you how to make the easiest cell activator that I've done and do a bloom with it. Just going to show you exactly step by step what I do and how easy it is to actually make it happen. Now, the paints, make sure they're shook up. These are all different, different brands, so they'll be slightly different ratios for each, but I'm going to make it exactly to kind of like that green. Must have added water or something to it at an earlier time. So, just going to take this, and I'll pick a different green here in a minute. Annoying part about the new paint. It's a brand that I don't really use that often, but I just picked a few of them. Doing the flow trial first helps it slide out a little easier, as you can see. Um, I'll mix up one on camera, and then the rest I'll do fast forward so you don't have to sit through it all. And it's just there nice and slow, just to make sure that it's all completely mixed up. And not get like big air bubbles or anything like that in it. And these cups have a little ridge on the bottom, so you can kind of look on the sides and see whenever it's mixed up all the way. Break the sides a little bit. And this is relatively thicker than I normally do. Normally do three parts to one, but you know it makes a mound and then disappears pretty quick, which is kind of what you're after. And then from there, just kind of eyeball the rest of the colors. See roughly how much paint is in that one, and then eyeball it from there. Get it up to roughly about that same amount and, and call it good. 
so let me pick another color real fast. ready for the easiest setup. Just bottled water. Um, literally a one teaspoon or tablespoon of that in there. And then I'm using you know Amsterdam lamp black for this demonstration. Just take this to one teaspoon, a little bit heaping it, but you know, it'll, it'll amount to about one teaspoon or tablespoon whenever it's done. Dump that right in. You know, get all the paint out because this is kind of a stupid little setup, but. And it just makes it slow. It'll take a minute, but this is the part you don't really want to rush too much. And if you rush, you'll get a lot of air bubbles and then have to let it sit for a while. And it's basically just stirring it nice and slow. If there's any lumps, kind of mash them up against the side of the walls. And whenever we're done, I'll show you all the different cell activator colors and brands that I've used so far on this one. That has been working really well. So it's a pretty easy ratio for those who don't have Australian Floetrol or don't want to buy it right now. Um, it's super easy. Very quick little mix up. I made up some paint previously um, to do little experiments to make sure this is going to be one that I wanted to try to teach. So, pretty well mixed up. It's pretty runny. Hopefully you can see that on camera. Yeah, super easy. So now what we'll do is take the colors. I've got other colors that I have mixed up in this exact same ratio. And if you follow along with my Facebook page, you might have seen a couple of these already done. So I might use a couple of these in the painting that I'm about to just to demonstrate. Um, plain tile, unglazed, is super, super simple. Um, make sure that's good. Move this up a little bit. I normally have the camera on the other side, so it's a little easier for me to work, but I wanted to show you step by step. So this is a paint that I made the other day. Exact same ratio, two to one. Which is, I'll do one with no base and one with a, a pillow paint added to it, just so you can kind of see the difference in both. Now, once again, yellow from the other day. Literally nothing special, just pouring it right down in the middle of all of these. No, let's see. Get a little hair for there. Let's see, this pink is black light reactive, so that'll be a kind of neat color effect on there.
a little bit right in the middle. And now this is the black that we just made up. Put a little dot right in the center of it. Kind of hard to see, but right in the center, it starts um, doing a little halo around the black, which means that it's going to work with what you got. I've got my little um, mini blower, and you know, just blow it up. And seriously, look how easy those cells were. And then you could take from there, you could take a silicone straw. Just to blow a little bit more. You see this right here is where the pillow paint will come in. It will make it where it stretches a little easier. But what we'll do in the meantime, since this one's not, is take another one of our colors and then just lightly go around the outside just to help the paint stretch a little bit further. That way it kind of holds together some. And then like I said after this I'll do one with a pillow paint. Just to show you a little bit of the difference. I use it on occasion but a lot of times with the pillow paint um, the pillow will show through on the east. Sometimes I don't like that. That's why I don't always use it. Now it's going to stretch it a little bit further back towards the center. Throw it down on here and just give it a little spin. And then see, since it's not on that corner yet, scoot it slightly this way. And now this right here will be on the outside. And it'll do that. I need to clean off my board a lot. I haven't done that yet, so you didn't see that. Norm, it's silicone mat, so it kind of holds it down a little bit. I haven't cleaned it in a minute. Almost. So just another little spin. Good enough. And see that one right there.
and see all those cells and then the lacing and everything else just from that little bit. So I'll stick this to the side and then do one with the pillow paint and show you how that does. Another little tile. In case it, this is a pillow paint that I made just out of heavy body acrylic and American Fotrell. Just shook it to get it all the way up, so I'll have to portrait real quick. Just to make sure no bubbles pop up. No. Just a little bit of the glue that I made the other day. Just because I like the color, so we'll do green. Get crazy with this one. And this is thick enough that you can move it around and kind of guide where you want the paint to drip from. I usually get tired of waiting, so I just have to blob it on. Blow in the dark pink. Just the slightest bit of yellow. The black that we just made up. And since it's kind of off center, stretch it back a little bit. Once again, take a little blower. Just put my hair a little bit closer. Didn't quite get any over on that side, but that's where the nice silicone trail comes in. And you basically just give it a minute. And let the paint come back to the center. And then put it down and spin it up. Now that's where you can take a toothpick or whatever tool you would like and now this wrecking the bloom. The 
basically making little figure eights throughout. Let's see if I can do this one without eating it off the edge again. You see with the pillow, it stretches a lot easier. So there is good argument for having pillow paint on there. It's just a lot of times with the tiles, with them being as small as they are, I just use one of my colors as the pillow. And kind of call it good on that. But, you know, just very basic, easy little blooms that you could do. And there's so many different colors you could use. Um, put this up there. Like I've got, you know, I've got silver from Arteza. I've got the Arteza titanium white, um, Pathalo green, the Arteza gold, and then my Amsterdam colors. So my Amsterdam red, Amsterdam yellow. And then also have an Amsterdam blue. And like I said, if you've been following along, uh, you'll see that it has been working. This one right here was with the Amsterdam red. Um, that right there is with the black that I made the other night. They need to be shined up a little bit, but a very basic. Uh, very basic little gloss varnish and uh, you have it shined up looking great. So makes it good. It's super super easy. And this ratio is literally one to one on the cell activator and two to one on the paints. This one is not my favorite. I like the uh, yellow one a little bit better. That one. It's just that's more my aesthetic, even though I really love the colors of this one. But that's the fun part about painting. Always paint over it. So don't be intimidated. Everything's super easy. I'll link everything in the video below. So if you want you know, the spinner to the electric little mini blower to everything that I used. So, you know, got any questions, leave a comment below. And... Thank you for watching. I'll try to make more of these in the future and see if I can't get started teaching you how to do these things. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.